Rochelle. A thick, low fog was rolling through the grassy patches between the trees and clinging to my ankles as I walked through the orchard. I had never seen fog manifest like that before. It didn't get foggy in Vancouver very often, but when it did, it put the entire city into whiteout. That held true for most of the places we'd camped along the U.S. Northwest coast, similarly close to the ocean. I glanced up at the sky, peering through thick, leaf-covered branches above me just as a cloud obscured the half-full moon. By the height of the dark trees, I assumed I was wandering through the cherry orchard, but I couldn't see any other distinguishing characteristics in the dark, which seriously called into question why the hell I was wandering around outside at all, let alone on the upper edge of the property so far from the brave. I paused. The night was mild, but not overly chilly. Perhaps I needed air? Though putting on some clothing would have been a great idea. Panties and a tank top were just inviting the bugs to a buffet. A figure was standing with his back to me among the trees. Dark hair, dark suit, pale skin. Blackwell. My heart thumped once, painfully. Why would the sorcerer be in the orchard in the middle of the night? Why would he show up without texting first? How did he even know where we were? Blackwell tucked his hand up behind his back. Darkness was pooled in his palm. Not darkness, magic. This wasn't a midnight stroll in the fog. This was a vision. A vision within a dream? Was that why I was surrounded by fog, not the mist that usually accompanied visions? Was I sleeping? Was that why I felt more present? Like I could feel the dry night air on my bare arms? Rochelle. A deadened whisper echoed through my mind. The noise reached through my dream and embedded itself into the darkest recesses of my soul. The voice was full of possessiveness. Though my name sounded overly articulated, as if the speaker was just learning to speak, Blackwell whirled around, but he didn't look directly at me. He was looking at something beside me. His face blanched. I turned my head. The demon was standing next to me. Me. And it was looking at me, not at Blackwell. It had clawed its way from the page on which my mother had rendered it and somehow appeared in this dream, this nightmare that might also somehow be a vision. Fear rolled through my belly, but I refused to acknowledge it. This was a vision. I was in control of my magic. Well, at least in the sense of understanding that no harm could come to me within a vision. I was to observe and record observe and record. The demon tilted its head so that I was gazing directly into its black smudged, crimson orbed eyes. It was like looking into the pits of hell, if I'd believed in that sort of thing. I forced myself to maintain eye contact, absorbing as much detail as possible. The creature was constructed out of scaled shadows, or maybe coal-colored smoke. I wasn't sure how I was going to draw it without more defined edges, and the smell of death hit me. Curdled, spoiled, copper-tainted old blood. I'd never smelled anything like it before, yet I knew exactly what it was. Death, doom, destruction. Run, you fool, Blackwell shouted. Then he flung his deadly orbs of magic at me. I threw my arms across my face, twisting away but unable to run, and sat up in my bed, far from the cherry orchard and with Bo at my side. What is it? He murmured. A breeze tugged at the curtains across the window at my feet. The pre-dawn light was touching the interior of the brave. The rooster would be crowing in a few moments. The remembered smell of carrion drifted across the bed. My stomach curled. A dream, I whispered. Just a dream? A vision? Bo shifted up on his elbow. It couldn't be, 